Welcome back, erudite magicians. Thanks for being here on my channel, Erudite Magic. My name is Jeff Kowalk. Throughout the ages, magicians have often been looking for that one killer effect that's going to push them over the edge. Or in some cases, people are waiting on that TV deal to materialize out of thin air. The underlying question in all of this is, what is that one thing I'm missing to be successful? In this video, we're going to explore what that one thing is, so you don't want to miss this. It will surprise no one to know that the one thing that you're missing is a book. It's not just any book, though. Today, we're going to be talking about Ken Weber's Maximum Entertainment. This book was put out in 2003 by Ken Weber, who is a former performing mentalist who was part of the Psychic Entertainers Association. He performed for colleges. I believe he's been in over 500 universities and was a very sought after performer back when he was performing full time. So what is the book? Well, I believe that the subtitle says it all, that it is Director's Notes for Magicians and Mentalists. Most of us have enough magic filling our shelves to last lifetimes of finding and performing tricks. But that's not what's holding you back. So what exactly does that mean? Well, the one thing that you're missing to make you successful is a director. As Ken says in the book, directors are the backbone of theater. Now, I know what you're thinking, as does Mr. Weber. That is that you can't afford a director. He understands that, which is why he's written this book. The whole book started off as a workshop that he presented for the Psychic Entertainers Association meeting, whereby he sat and critiqued the different acts based on his experience as both a performer and a director. The feedback that he provided was so well received that it was repeated six more times at the request of the performers. Based on that workshop, Ken Weber has put together his notes for how you can become a better performer through the eyes of a director. And in this book, his goal is to turn you into your own director. Ken Weber wants to teach you how you can become your own director because, let's face it, most of us perform a single person show. We do everything. If that's you, then this book was designed with you in mind. So the book itself is approximately 250 pages. I'm holding the 2003 first edition. However, there is now a second edition that has been published, which adds another 70 to 80 pages and updates a lot of the examples within the book. While I have not actually read version 2.0, it doesn't matter to me because the first version is plenty to get you well on your way. So who's the book for? Well, it's for magicians, mentalists, close up, stage, or otherwise. There's something for everyone in this book. However, it is going to be geared primarily for those who perform on some kind of stage. Certainly, a close-up magician or table-hopping magician will get plenty of information from the book about how to present themselves and how to develop their own act. But Ken Weber's experience was as a stage performer, and so I think that the experience that he provides you and the feedback he gives you is geared with that more in mind. So what's, what's covered in the book? It's not really a book that is designed to be creative. Its goal is to make you more creative. He's giving you director's notes which say, do this, don't do this, here's some tips, you should stop saying or doing this. And when he does that and he tells you to stop saying or doing something, he's not going to fill in the blank for you because everybody's act is their own artistic vision and he recognizes that. What he's trying to do is help shape your art to become something better. In the first part of the book, Ken Weber defines for you what is entertainment. What's this goal that we're all reaching for? And I think this is a great place to start because so many of us perform without ever actually thinking about what specifically is the end goal. He helps define this. And the way he looks at it, you can present things that are either puzzles, tricks, or extraordinary moments. Obviously, extraordinary moments is where we're headed, and with Ken Weber's help, you can get there. 
After defining what the goal is and what entertainment is, he walks you through what the audience's reaction should be to these moments. You're looking for rapt attention, laughter, or astonishment. Once you've defined what the goal is and what the audience's reaction is, it now helps you to develop how are you going to get there. The author then proceeds to walk you through six steps to put into your show to get you to a higher level of performance. Everything in the book with the examples is born of real performance data, whether it was experience by Ken Weber or through observations of other experienced performers. You're getting the cream of the crop as it relates to advice for your performances. Ken covers how you should script and rehearse your act so that you're prepared, confident, and ready to walk away and back to the script during a performance. It's not going to be as in-depth as, say, a scripting magic in terms of how to script, but it is going to give you enough basics that you're going to improve the way you currently script your shows and your tricks. He talks about how to choose the material that you're going to include in your act. And again, I wouldn't suggest that this is a detailed, in-depth breakdown of what you should do. These are, again, director's notes, more of those high-level, it's your creative vision, so he's not telling you how to structure your own artistic vision. Instead, he's telling you here are some basic understandings you should have about the buildup of effects and whether you should add texture or things like that. So there's some really great thoughts in here about how you should build a show. And if you've never done it, this is a great place to start. One of my favorite points that he makes in here is that the rush to accumulate the new prevents the perfection of the old. I'm as guilty as anyone about this. I'm always looking for a new book or a new trick or something new to add to my act, whether it's because I have a subliminal belief that that's going to take my act to the next level or just because as hunter-gatherers, I like to gather new possessions into my cave. Either way, that kind of mindset is holding me back from turning what I already have into finely polished and beautiful gems of performance. Ken goes on to talk about your appearance, how you should dress for success, what you should wear, how you should look, what about your breath, things that you can do that may seem obvious, but to many of us, if it hasn't occurred to you, you simply don't know what you don't know. He talks about your voice and how to improve your projection, your speaking, your articulation, your vocabulary to make you a better and more interesting performer. That's where I think the beauty of this book lies, is that it's going to tell you things that are common sense. But if they were so common, why isn't everyone doing it? So actually reading this material with a pen in hand and some paper will help you to realize what is it that you need to change? And that perspective, that director's perspective, taking a step back and looking at your act without those guards on the eyes that are so often accompanied with the actual producer or creator of the show helps to improve it because it's a different perspective and it's thinking about things that maybe the artist wasn't thinking of when they created it. He also goes into gear, your microphones, and how you should select a quality microphone, how you should set it up, what kind of testing do you need to do, where do your speakers need to be, how should you hear yourself to make sure that you're aware of how you sound on this microphone, where should you hold a microphone, how should you handle it, what about if you have a participant who needs a microphone? All that and more is covered in the book. He discusses lighting, soundboards, the sound guy at the venue, the different software that is available to people so that you can manage your show and control the sound and lighting for your own act. At this point, I'm assuming that version 2.0 of this book updates some of the software and things available to modern performers because at the time this book was written in 2003, of course, Ken Weber is giving you the most advanced technology that was available and recommending things that at the time were cutting edge, 
but having been 17 years ago at the time of this video, of course, technology has continued to move on, and now there are things that are even more incredible and help you control your show and tighten it even more. So I'm sure that in version 2.0, some of those things are covered, but certainly you can check online in various talk groups or discussions with other professionals about the kinds of equipment that they're using. He discusses owning everything. So there's a book called Extreme Ownership, and clearly Ken Weber believes in extreme ownership, that if anything goes wrong in your show, it's your fault. It's your show. So no matter who actually is to blame, it's your fault because you're the one standing in front of an audience and you are the one who needs to be sure that everything is as in order as it can be. Now, that said, he also gives you some things to do when things do go wrong, as inevitably they will. Towards the end of the book, he gives you some advice on different types of performance styles and venues. For example, he talks uh, some specifics about close-up magicians and different things that pertain specifically to them that may not apply to the parlor style or stage magicians. He also has a section in here on mentalism, which is my specialty, so I read that extra carefully since Ken himself was an extraordinary mentalist. Finally, he talks about getting participants up on stage, how you should block and stage that, so how should they face, how should you interact with a microphone with them, making sure that everyone in the audience can see everything that's happening, that it can be heard, and basically that people can enjoy the entertainment that you're trying to provide and deliver to them. He goes over how to get applause and even a standing ovation. There's also the debrief where you go back over your act and you scrub and polish everything you've seen. Punctuated throughout the text are some highlights of some of Ken Weber's favorite performers and what their performances taught him about the subject that was discussed in that chapter. And he gives you some of what he calls his uh, personal entertainment highlights. He talks about David Copperfield, Matt King, Al Flosso, and others, and talks about how their performances, what made it stand out and really deliver the entertainment. Here's the bottom line. This book covers so much good stuff, and I cannot recommend this highly enough. Once you've started to develop kind of a base of books and knowledge and tricks and things that you've accumulated that you feel meet your performance style, and as you start to put those together into something more than just individual tricks, this is a very logical next step for a book to help you develop an act something that is a cohesive whole and has synergy to it, where all of them together is more than the sum of each individual trick in terms of entertainment value. The book is not expensive at all, which he's kept the price consistent since 2003, which is pretty incredible when you consider that books and other things have gone up exponentially in price. What you're getting in the book is available to you version 2.0 at the same price as I paid years ago for the first version. I know some will look at this and say, but there's no tricks. But that's missing the point that if you want to take your magic and your own performance style to the next level, this is the kind of book that you need. And so I give it my highest recommendation. This book was early on in my five foot shelf of magic for a reason, because I think that this is one of the books that I have read the most in terms of repeat readings. I always go back to it and I always find something new to learn and to help me grow. Not only that, but this book is available as an audiobook. So if audiobooks are your thing, this is a distinct possibility in that category, a rare find in the magic world. So here's my burning question for you. I want you to comment down below with what books would you like to see turned into an audiobook for magic? The bottom line is I want you to be able to deliver maximum entertainment to your audiences. You need to read this book, love this book, take notes, make this book your best friend so that you can become your own director. If you already own the book, I want to hear about how this book helped you to deliver maximum entertainment. What were your key takeaways from it? That's all I've got for you for right now. 
But as always, if there's anything I didn't answer, if you have additional questions, let me hear from you down below. Until next time, keep reading.